Welcome to Meet Your Neighbor. Today we're at the home of Mary Green in her backyard to get a feel of a bit of the peace and quiet here, a uh, feel for some of her yoga practice, and to learn a little bit more about her as a Hopkinton neighbor. Hi, Mary. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you for inviting me to your home today for Meet Your Neighbor. Uh, you have beautiful surroundings here in Hopkinton in your backyard. It's a lovely day here today. It is. I'm glad the sun came out because it was kind of cold and rainy earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, beautiful surroundings with uh, some of your plants here. And we're here to talk a little bit about you and your life. And there are many different directions, like many different plants growing here today, mm -hmm. uh, that I am aware about you. And we'll just try to tap into some of it. One of the first things that I'd like to begin with is that I know you have been teaching yoga mm -hmm. uh, out in the community and beyond the community in Massachusetts in different places. Right. Um, and uh, wondering uh, how long you've been teaching mm. yoga. Um, I did my training at Kripalu and mm -hmm. that was five years ago. Mm -hmm. So I've been officially teaching as a certified teacher for five years, but I've been doing yoga you know, for many years before that. Mm -hmm. So I just say okay. many years. <laughs> many years, all right. And um, well, I know from your practice that you often use words, spoken words as part of the mm. yoga practice as well. And why is that? Mm. Why do you? Well, I find that, um, I find that yoga and creative expression is, is sort of one in the same. Mm. And, uh, and, and I have a favorite author slash poet, her name is Dana Faltz. Mm -hmm. um, and she started, I think, as a creative writer and she discovered yoga afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it became really a therapeutic kind of way for her to express herself um, because yoga was bringing up some of these things. And so mm -hmm. I often will use some of her poems beginning or ending class because it's just, it taps into something universal, mm -hmm. you know, um, about that. So. Um, I just find it's a powerful way to bring people together. Mm -hmm. Would you share one of those with oh, us? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I find I collect poems and, and I find that I, I tend to just kind of put them in a shoebox and, and recycle oh. them. Oh. And as timing is such that one comes up, you know, I find it. So this is a, what the, at the top of my box. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Awareness Knowing Itself and it's by Dana Faltz. Settle into the here and now, reach down into the center where the world is not spinning, and drink this holy peace. Feel relief flood into every cell. Nothing to do, nothing to be but what you are already. Nothing to receive but what flows effortlessly from the mystery into form. Nothing to run from, nothing to run toward. Just this breath, awareness knowing itself as embodiment just this breath, awareness, waking up to truth. Mm. Wow, yeah, that is powerful little piece. Uh, That's one of my favorite words now is embodiment. Uh, <laughs> and why is that? Um, be think, because I think it speaks to the body mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, being in the body and living from that place. Mm -hmm. And why should we make that a priority in these days when we spend mm. a lot of time um, you know, at our work, uh, in buildings, at, in front of the computer, uh, mm. for social and work-related reasons. Why should we be in our body? Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. where everything. St that's where everything is. You mm -hmm. know, we're these mm -hmm. spirits walking around in bodies. Mm -hmm. So, the fact that you can feel the earth under your feet, right, is very grounding. Um, and we have all these other great senses we see and we hear and we smell, and to be aware of that is just a wonderful way. You can live fully, right? Mm -hmm. Mindfulness is another way to... Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by mindful? mindfulness? Just um, paying attention to what's happening mm -hmm. as it happens and you, knowing that it's happening. Do you think that uh, in this day in our society in Hopkinton and beyond that we tend to be mindful no. uh, naturally? Or um, I think there's a certain amount of it that is natural mm -hmm. because we do have five senses mm -hmm. and you know we are have to have a certain amount of awareness to get through our daily lives mm -hmm. you know I think the subtlety of it um, you know 
we go off of that a lot and that's just part of being human mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah so I would say it's it's a constant practice for everybody in Hopkinton and beyond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why do you think that there's a growing movement of mindfulness and oh. yoga now? Well I think that I think it's a kind of a hard to say a chicken and egg kind of thing but I think is more um, Western medicine as as more Western medicine is seen that it plays a purpose in mm -hmm. one's own healing and living more uh, a more vibrant life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That it's being accepted in that realm and there's been a lot more money in research that is mm -hmm. proving out yeah. some methods of either yoga or other types of mindful movement like Tai Chi or Qigong mm -hmm. and meditation techniques. Um, and the more science that comes the more that feeds back into us going, well, you know what, they've proven this, this, and this. And so it just kind of builds on itself and it mm -hmm. becomes more mainstream. Um, there's even a mindful magazine that's out now and Tom Ryan is on the cover. He's a congressman, so he's got mm -hmm. everybody right. there meditating, which is a really everybody good where? thing in Washington. In Washington? <laughs> Not uh -huh. everybody, but uh -huh. there's, a, there's a group and it is, um, it is part of their routine schedule. I don't know how often it's done. Wow. But uh, the president? I don't know. If, uh, I do uh -huh, not know yeah. if the president mm -hmm. is part of All that. All Congress? Uh, anybody. I don't know if everybody, <laughs> I do not know if this is a mandatory thing mm -hmm. or if it's just something that anybody can tap into. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's available yeah. is really wonderful. So you're saying that mindfulness uh, practice as well as yoga is can be for everyone it, oh, it is not exclusive to oh absolutely just people following new age uh, practice uh, oh absolutely mm -hmm. yes and I, I think we all um, children absolutely children are the best children mm -hmm. and animals are the best mindful beings and you know mm -hmm. especially young babies because they're all about being in their body and testing things out with how things feel and smell and you know touching and all of that is really kind of they're exploring in the moment you know and everything's new and we tend to be a little bit more um uh you know habituated to things as mm -hmm. we get older and so we're not having that sense of oh things are new but um absolutely men i think kids men <laughs> absolutely even men cheryl mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely anybody uh, we all did have you that say you're working in corporate world with yoga um with yoga mm -hmm. yes um I do, I've got three different companies I'm working with right now, mm -hmm. and um, I really love teaching yoga in the workplace. And the three places that I'm in now are all very different. There's, they, the spectrum is there's one that has a really grand fitness center mm -hmm. um, and just a lot of, of um, just a lot devoted to that part of the facility. Mm -hmm. And then there's another place that has to clear out in a small space, just clear out mm -hmm. every week, but they do that. The facilities people clear out a space for men and women, and in this particular group is all different ages. There's a guy that just graduated from college a couple of years ago, and there's you know a grandmother of five, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're all doing yoga together in this space that mm -hmm. wow. you know is set up for them. So men and women in the corporate world and don't need to be in the corporate world, and you're even speaking of our elders in society. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. So that's the whole developmental spectrum. Everyone could and should be doing yoga <laughs> and mindfulness, perhaps. Uh, well, if they want. yes, but the word, <laughs> you know, and now that you say it that way, it's like you have to temper it because the word yoga has um, different connotations. Uh, I yeah. think when people mm -hmm. say yoga, it means different things right. to different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so yoga in and of itself involves a lot of different things, including the physical postures that mm -hmm. we do, yeah. but it includes, you know, a lot more than that mm -hmm. um, in the way we use our breath and the way that we live our lives mm -hmm. and really just the way that priorities are set, you mm -hmm. know, and there's lots of different models for this and yoga has its own model for this. Mm -hmm. The physical postures are a piece of it mm -hmm. and um, as long as it's done safely, mm -hmm. yes. So could we give that a try right now? Uh, sure. Actual. Demonstration. An actual, a, dem a demonstration. A <laughs> demonstration. Um, sure. Can we do a yoga move. Only that? if you join me. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs>
<gasps> Let me take my shoes off. Oh, and it's so it's <laughs> nice today, so we can guy, we can get beautiful. our toes into the yes. grass. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, well, one, my my favorite postures really are the ones that they're they're not simple, but they're the ones that beginners, you know, anybody at any level can do. Right. And I've already got kind of a wider stance here. Um, the warrior posture is really wonderful because it's. It builds strength the from mm -hmm. the ground up. And you'll see as we get into it, we're gonna build strength in our arms. We're gonna get really grounded in our legs. And it starts with this wide stance and we feel the earth under our feet, literally. And I feel that the mindfulness piece of this is I feel I'm in a divot on this side and I'm on a big lump on this side. Oh, so okay. I don't know if you can feel anything different where you are, but it's like, all right. I feel a slant. <laughs> <laughs> we're on a slant, so we're going to be doing warrior uphill All this right. way. So I just want you to lift up your left toes, and you feel the earth kind of under the heel, and spin out. So what you've just done is you opened up, and now send your hips towards me. Good. And just relax. That's it, too. Mm -hmm. Relax. Can I do this in a jacket? Absolutely. Right, yes, okay. you look great. <laughs> so you've just opened up this side, and then when you bend into it, we just call this a lunge. And you just want to make sure your knee and your ankle are lined up. And then relax. So I'm doing a lot with the relaxing now mm. because it's like, all right, if you had to wait in line 30 minutes with this, how would you hold it? You know, probably not like that. So you relax and just feel a little stretch here. Mm -hmm. It's like, right. So you're leaning into it a little bit and then add the arms. So you're forward directed through that lunge leg and you're forward directed through the front arm, backward directed through the back arm. There. One last piece is you direct your gaze right over the center fingertip, the middle finger of the front arm. Okay, and then just relax the shoulders. Something I often do in classes is tell people, send the palms up and like a little bend, like you're, like you're holding something or also like you're receiving something. Mm -hmm. This is definitely more open in the shoulders. It's a little bit more relaxed way to be. So you might be feeling, if we were holding this a long time and when we have been holding it a little bit, mm -hmm. you may feel, you know, it's like you're using your legs your arms are definitely getting to work. Let's take the palms down now. And this is another grounded way. When palms are down, it grounds the posture. And there we go, that's warrior two. Mm -hmm. So if you bring the arms down, come right back. We can do it on the downhill side too. Just spin out and now you've opened this side. Your hips pull towards me and bend into that. Always checking that your knee and your ankle are lined up. And then add the arms. Ha! <sighs> Cheryl, you look awesome. <laughs> So do you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the best instructions I got with this, um, and we'll come back. We'll come back out of this. You did great. All right. So come back. No, one of the best. good. One of the best instructions I got through this is, you're strong, but you're um, uh, graceful. Mm -hmm. So it brings a little softening, right? Mm -hmm. Because warriors aren't always about war. It's about intention and purpose and moving forward. Oh, can you just show the sun practice? Oh, the sun salutation? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because that's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay, so sun salutation works with the breath. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be talking through this in breath and out breath. Um, it's an energizing practice because it involves using the spine forward and backward, typically done in India and, and with serious pr practitioners anywhere, but typically done in the morning. Um, to the sun. So facing the sun, you take a breath in and you reach up. And as you exhale, send it down. You're going to take a nice long spine forward. So you can keep the knees bent here, Cheryl, if you're going to do the All whole right. thing with me. So you touch the, the fingertips down. down. Good. <laughs> send a nice big breath in, come up halfway, let your spine be long. And now we're like crown of our heads are coming together and exhale, bring it down. How much of this do you want to do? Oh, just one. Okay. You're going to step back <laughs> with the left foot. You're in a lunge. All right. I didn't oh, know we were doing this. You are so awesome. <laughs> Can you do down dog here? Because no. I know you've done no it No down before. dog today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the rest of the post, I'll, I'll, I can either do the rest of the sequence on my own or yes, we'll just do set that. another Why time. don't you? And I'll All get right, back generally, up now. Generally from lunge, <laughs> you work into down dog. I've never actually done this in the yard, uh. right? And working here is what we call plank. So it's a nice core engagement. Uh. And then you slowly bring it down to the earth and roll through and this is the nice up dog that's beautiful right? curl it around settling into down dog generally i'd hold it for a number of breaths but i won't here i'll keep it a little bit faster and it's coming from lunge and it takes us right back up all the way up yes this is what 
<laughs> that's, and I down. think that's beautiful. That's it. And the way that you smile when you teach, I think, is... Oh, yeah, yeah. so this is called Anjali Mudra. Ah, a beautiful hand movement. And yes. Thank you. Well, that was uh, interesting and fun. Uh, so, <laughs> good sport, uh, we'll Cheryl. To You're a very good chairs. sport. <laughs> <laughs> Just not the downward dog. <laughs> <laughs> with the suit I jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Um, and it, it certainly is uh, fun and it does feel uh, s strong, a uh, sense mm. of being strong and graceful also as you say that and mm. more connected to our body uh, as well and sort of awareness of as you said, the feet to the ground and the beautiful surroundings in our case now. Right. And I imagine as somebody that uses, you use your voice a lot and you may feel it too as mm. embodying into a little bit more grounded place to use your voice, mm -hmm. maybe. So, oh, it was a treat to try that and <laughs> a first for Meet Your Neighbor, so thank you. <laughs> um, and now uh, I'd like to get to know a little bit more about you beyond yoga teacher and wonder how you came about coming to Hopkinton in, mm. in the first place. Um, 19 years ago, I think you told me. Right, right, 19 years ago. It was really about geography. Mm -hmm. yeah. because I was working at the time in Medfield. Um, my husband happened to be working at the same facility in Medfield. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and we were living closer to Boston. Um, and we'd both been relocated there and it was, the commute was bad and mm -hmm. we yeah. just found out we were going to start our family mm -hmm. with two. Ah. So I just found out I was pregnant with twins. Uh -huh. And we thought, well, we wanna just, we wanna change things up, move out of the city. Hmm. and be a little bit closer to where we were working at the time and also um, have more of a, you know, a suburban hmm. landscape and a yard mm -hmm. uh, to run around It's just beautiful in. here Thanks. to Thanks. raise a family. And so you started off with two children at the same time. <laughs> yes. Uh, and how did that go? Raising twins in Hopkinton. How did it go raising <laughs> twins in Hopkinton? Well, I have to say Hopkinton is just a wonderful place to raise mm -hmm. a family. Um, and we always took full advantage of, you know, um, uh, going to Sandy Beach and going to the ah, state yeah. park. Uh -huh. And um, uh, the schools were just wonderful for both of them growing up. And they're, they're very different as twins usually are, just very different, happen to be a, you know, boy and a girl, mm -hmm. son and daughter. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I, I found it was just very supportive through the school system and um, mm -hmm. yeah, just yeah, very easy. And they've finished their education here in Hopkinton, right? Right. They're off now in college. Right. In they graduated directions. last year and they're off their separate ways. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, and now here you are back at the Hopkinton Nest and uh, you're doing this work in yoga. Um, but that's not how you got started, uh, from what you were telling me earlier, that uh, when you went to college yourself uh, a few years ago, mm. uh, you studied in a different direction? I did. I did. My bachelor's is in biomedical engineering, yeah. uh -huh. and, uh, and then I went on and got a master's degree mm -hmm. in a, man a technical management degree and was working in that field for a uh -huh. little while uh -huh. um, and I and I left it and it was really it hinged on the fact that it hinged on a lot of different things but it was mostly hinged around the fact that um, I had a lot of different pulls and passions and things that mm -hmm. I wanted to do and um, I had two little babies mm -hmm. and I thought I would take a little time off with them and it just turned into a lot of time off um, and exploring different things and working other part-time jobs mm -hmm creatively mm -hmm. through the years and that that's been my my next that's been what I've done since hmm. pretty much I know you were working at the boathouse at the state I park was. So I was out in nature uh, right right I was working at the um, I think it's the name of the business has actually changed names but mm -hmm. um, working for the kayaking and sailing camps uh -huh. Uh -huh. there and yeah did you take some time to kayak yourself around oh uh, yes uh -huh. yes yeah. I love to do that and I recall also uh, in talking with you that you mentioned uh, you're a bit of a mountain climber in your I hike. spare time, whatever that is. I wouldn't say I'm a mountain climber, right. but I do hike. And but you hike mountains? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. and the White Mountains especially. Uh -huh. um, love that. So there's How many a, mountains have you climbed? 
Well, in the White Mountains, there are 48 peaks that are over 4,000 feet, and they're just called mm -hmm. the 4,000 footers. Uh, and uh -huh. so my husband had hiked all of them when we met. Wow. He'd already hiked all of them, and I said that I wanted to do the same. So last summer, we finally finished up, for me, um, the last of those of those peaks. Wow, well, and, congratulations. Uh, thank you. It, so you're both in the same club now. <laughs> <laughs> and now we can now I can do them for a second time and he can do them for a third. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So you do this together. We do. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's something yeah. we try to go once in the spring and then once in the fall. Mm -hmm. And you do you stay there? Sometimes, overnight? sometimes mm -hmm. um, sometimes we'll do day hikes and um, sometimes we'll stay in a hut mm -hmm. up there. The Appalachian Mountain Club has mm -hmm. a series of huts and that can be fun. And we've done that as a family as well. So the mm -hmm. kids have you know hiked with us um, and sometimes we just camp mm -hmm. we just put our sleeping bag and our tent in our backpack and live off the that, land live off the <laughs> land so to speak for 24 hours uh -huh. without yeah. a bathroom or shower or cooking facilities that's right Cheryl uh -huh. yeah. oh, that's that's <laughs> impressive yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a great experience uh, I would think for both of you as well as with your children mm. um, yeah it, it's a fun way to spend some mm -hmm. time yeah and then there's a, an artist side of you as well. I know you mm -hmm. worked over at the Art Center mm -hmm. for a while as well, the Hopkinton, uh, it, then known as the Cultural Arts Alliance, right. and now the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Yes. And uh, you were there, what were you doing? Um, I was there, uh, well not in the capacity of an artist, but really as an office manager mm -hmm. and, you know, on the administrative side mm -hmm. and doing that. And I haven't been there for a little while. And so I, I, it's always great to see all the wonderful progress that is being mm -hmm. made now with mm -hmm. it, yeah. And uh, I know that since then you have been experiencing art yourself as an artist uh, in oh. the areas that you are interested in. Um, somewhat, yeah. And I mean, I've always, I've always loved to work with my hands mm -hmm. um, and that was really... It's interesting being part of the um, Women's Art Forum and hearing other artists talk about their childhoods and, and what was important to them. And what did you like uh, in childhood? What did I like To do or experience oh, with your hands? Um, anything, anything, anything and everything. And I lived in a house, my mom was a painter. And um, I look back on it now and I just see I had pretty much everything open to me. I mean, it wasn't a studio space per se, but in our kitchen in the closet we had whatever I might need you know mm -hmm. to make a linoleum block print or wow. you know painting or collage or that's how I like to spend my time mm -hmm. and um, and it was solitary generally and I liked that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I spent a lot of time just making things mm -hmm. creating things well I'm aware that you have found enjoyment in creating uh, these wonderful collage mm -hmm. pieces um, and I had asked you to bring a few to show. I don't know if you could uh, sure one at the moment. I do have some. Before I share them, I'll just I'll say a couple things about it. Is that they're collage that does not involve my hand at all, except to cut and paste. Mm -hmm. So it's all done through magazines. Um, and the challenge for me was to take an index card, so, you know, this is a 3 by 5 index card, and to just use cut images and, you know, mm -hmm. words um, or phrases and just create, like, little affirmation uh -huh. yeah. cards. I did it... Um, They're beautiful. I think I did it, and I have a few more, you know, for instance. They, they're all... To me, they just kind of read like a little deck of mm -hmm. cards. And depending on how I'm feeling, I'll post one near my, my office desk, you know. But they're very simple. They're fun. I think I started the first mm. couple with my daughter. Uh, yeah. um, just as a way wow. to, to spend time and, and have fun. I've uh -huh. given some away. But I like the fact that they're small mm -hmm. because, um, at least for me, if I think too big, with things, it, I don't get it started. So mm -hmm. I figure I can work on an index card fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are nice, I would think, to have framed as a little oh, bit of uh, well, some life people, I've given some away and people have done that. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I like to just put them away and then find them time after time, mm -hmm. you know, and pull one out and either give it away or give it to myself again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
well. Uh, they're just beautiful, and it seems that you uh, create beauty in many different ways mm. and a bit of uh, joy uh, in um, your practice, uh, what you've been involved with in life from biomedical engineer, although I was not in the lab, but <laughs> I imagine doing great things and raising twins in Hopkinton and and uh, finding your areas of interest in art and climbing mountains mm. and creating as well. Uh, and that's, it fe we're just about out of time, oh. uh, but my goodness, uh, uh, there is so much to get to know you, Mary Green. And I, I was wondering if you could just share maybe one more of your oh, sure. affirmations before we close. Yeah, um, and this one by John O'Donohue is part of a larger poem, but this part just resonated to me and I have it all over my house. Mm -hmm. So you would see these ah, in various places uh -huh. through the house. And it's from his poem, A Morning Offering. And he just says, may I have the courage today to live the life that I would love, mm -hmm. to postpone my dream no longer, but do at last what I came here for and waste my heart on fear no more. Wow. So yeah, that's that, a good thing to look at in the morning or to remember really in the morning. Mm -hmm. that's a or any time of day. Reminder and affirmation. And mm. it seems that, uh, you know, your contributions of your different work and time uh, represent that wish mm. in a way. Well, thank you. I would hope so. It's mm. a constant practice, I think. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for the yoga moves and oh, thank you for thank the you, interview Cheryl. and your beautiful yard. Thank you. And thank I you wish for you a good rest of your day. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>